you guys. Hi everyone. Um, I'm just going to chat to you guys about the structure of your Leaving Cert Spanish exam. Um, just kind of as a starting point so that everyone is familiar with how the whole thing is going to work. Um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the general structure, so like the like typical structure with no changes made, just because as of right now we're not sure what the changes are going to be or if there are going to be any. Um, so we're just going to act as though the exam is going to go ahead as normal with the same breakdown of marks just so that worst case scenario we're not thinking that like well we're going to have all of these changes and then nothing actually happens and um, i kind of rather it work the other way does that make sense so what we're going to be having a look at today is basically the breakdown of all three components of your leaving to a spanish exam and kind of i guess like what you're actually going to be getting marks for in every section if that makes sense okay so let's have a look at our first thing that's going to get us any marks at all for our leaving cert spanish exam which is the oral exam the thing that everyone doesn't want to do and everyone's terrified of whatever um so i've written under here right so our oral exam is with 100 marks we have a look at the top of the board and um, we can see that the leaving cert spanish exam as a total is worth 400 marks okay so that would mean then that our oral exam at higher level is going to be worth 25 percent Okay, which is lovely because that means that we have 25% in our back pocket as of Easter. Okay, because usually our oral exam is going to take place in the last two weeks before our Easter holidays. And um, we have different components here. So the first thing is we've got our role play. Now our role play is actually going to be the last thing that we actually do in our oral exam. Um, and our role play is going to account for 30 marks of those 100 marks. So the way that that's going to work is there's going to be four things that you'll learn off, which will get you 24 marks. So that'll be six 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 and six and then the examiner will ask you a random question that is relevant to the situation of the role play at the end and based on your answer for that you will get the last six marks as well so it's kind of like five sets of six marks basically so we're going to have a role play so then our general conversation is going to make up the remaining 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 katie good english the remaining 70 marks right so what are we actually going to get marks on out of those 70 marks so we've got four kind of general things to keep in mind and these aren't explicitly like written out anywhere but this is like if you look at the french marking scheme and stuff these are typically speaking the four things that the examiner is going to be looking at so we've got our communication which is basically your ability to hold a conversation your ability to kind of i guess like act normal in the exam if that makes sense like things like eye contact hand movements and um, that you are actually engaging what the examiner says that you don't go in and make the examiner feel as though you're completely like a complete wreck about trying like, about having to speak the language or whatever. Um, I love that I'm stuttering so much and I'm talking about this, so like don't do what I'm, what I'm doing, okay? But basically, this is like your conversation skills essentially, okay? We've got our communication, our pronunciation, okay? So that things like safe arguments like Spanish is a phonetic language so that means that every single letter in Spanish only makes one sound so are you able to recognize that that you're not make, like making mistakes by mixing it up with other languages and um, that you've got some sort of attempt at an, at an accent I know everyone hates hearing that but unfortunately it's going to get you good marks and um, then our last two are going to be our vocab and then your structures so vocab basically is just the examiner's way of making sure that you don't use the same word 53 times, okay? So things like interesante. If I hear the word interesante more than once in your oral exam, I will want to die. <laughs> no, but basically, like all, all jokes aside, if you are using the same adjective 15 times in your oral exam, fair enough, makes sense. You're not showing me that you've been studying this language for six years and look at all of this lovely vocab that I've learned of. Look at all these lovely words that I've had. Like literally every comprehension gets you to look for synonyms, learn them, okay? So maybe instead of saying something like importante, you might say importante, fundamental, imprescindible, esencial, útil, crítico, whatever. But you're showing the examiner that you've got other ways of saying the same thing, okay? And your structures is your grammar, okay? Your sentence structure, your agreement, um, your use of tenses, your recognition of tenses, all of that stuff, which is all haste, unfortunately, is the last feature in your oral exam, okay? And again, this will all take place usually the last two weeks before Easter. But we'll see if Miss Rona wants to ruin our lives again and we might have to do it next Christmas or something. Who knows, right? So keep kind of Easter time in your mind. All right. 
Next thing then is our written exam. So our written exam is going to make up the bulk of our marks. Okay, it's 20, uh, 22 marks. It's 220 marks, which is going to equate to 55%. Okay, within our written exam, we have a lot of different skills being tested. So our skills that are being tested are our comprehension skills. So your ability to read a text and show the examiner that you've understood the majority of the text. Okay, we've got translation skills in things like your dialogue construction. We've got grammar skills. And then we've also got written production. So that all sounds well and good, but what does that mean, okay? You're going to have different types of comprehensions on your exam. Section A, you're going to have your journalistic text, which is a little bit shorter, and is going to ask you for more kind of evidence from both the text and your own knowledge of Spanish. And then you're going to have two short comprehensions, which are going to be the nicest ones on the paper because they're, you know, short, simple and to the point, unlike myself. Um, and then you're going to have your section B comprehension, which is going to be the one that is given to you on a separate piece of paper on the day of your exam, which will be um, like an A4 length text. And then you'll have four questions on that. And that is going to be more so testing your understanding of the text itself, as opposed to testing your own language skills too. Um, so that's all of our comprehension stuff. Translation then is going to appear in things like your dialogue construction or um, your formal letter, and that you'll be given exact things to say and that you have to try and produce the same thing in Spanish, um, which I love, a lot of people hate, but I think it's a great testament to students that have worked throughout sixth year or worked throughout fifth and sixth year, um, that it's probably one of the best ways to see a student's skill with the language as opposed to it just being like learned all things, if that makes sense. And um, then your grammar is obviously going to appear in every piece of written work that you do. And then your written production is going to be things like the dreaded opinion piece, diary entry, or your note, all that good stuff, okay? So where you're actually producing your own Spanish, okay? And I, I love that, like producing your own Spanish, every student in the country. I learned this answer off, okay? But that's the whole point of it, okay? Our last thing then, now I will say, if anyone here has come to one of my grinds or one of my courses or as a day school student, you know what I'm about to say to you. Written exam, more than likely going to go from half nine until 12 o'clock, okay? This will start at 20 past 12. Do not go home before your hour exam. I don't know why I sing when I get nervous, but like, please just don't leave, right? Do your written exam, don't go home because you're going to have this after. The reason I'm saying it is that I think in Irish, the hour exam is before the written paper. So don't ruin your life and like forget that you've got this because the hour exam is worth the last 80 marks of your paper, which is going to make up the remaining, I said it right there, fair play, 20% of your grade, okay? Now, the hour exam is, I, I like it. A lot of students are like, what the hell is this? Do you know what I mean? People like to um, get stressed about the hour exam. But all we know is that the hour exam is the last 20% and there's certain things that we can do to kind of boost our grade here, right? So first of all, we have to become familiar with the layout of the paper. So the exam, I, all I, I can hear it from the, from the tape, it's like, el examen consiste en siete secciones. Okay, so the exam has seven sections. So it's going to be an announcement. So un anuncio, two dialogues, so dos diálogos. Dos pasajes descriptivos, so two descriptive passages. Un informe sobre el tiempo, so the weather. And una noticia, and a news piece. So, barring these two pieces here, everything else is going to be fairly random, right? So things that we can do to become more familiar with weather forecasts and news pieces is, believe it or not, listen to more weather forecasts and more news pieces. So. If you want to say, like, for argument's sake, go on to, and you can do it on YouTube as well, but like, if you go on to, like, google.es or youtube.es, it's going to bring you to the Spanish domain for both of those websites, okay? So if you go on to google.es and then search, like, tiempo, chances are it's going to give you today's weather forecast in Spanish, okay? And you might have to put it, like, it might come up on YouTube and you might have to put it on to 0.75 speed or something, but whether or not you're doing it as an exercise, just hearing the vocab and the way things are said and things like directions or like different words or whatever um, coming up all the time is going to familiarise you with that. Same thing with like news pieces, all that kind of stuff. And um, again, looking those up online 
I'm becoming familiar with the language that's used, probably the easiest way to boost your marks there. The other thing is, is that if you are someone who really struggles with the oral exam and you might want to have the, tran the transcript open beside you, um, now watch me get this wrong. So what is it? Educateplus.ie forward slash exam audio, I think. If you put that link into your search bar, it should bring you to a page with all of the transcripts of past papers, which means that like if you get an oral exam um, for part of your homework and you're sitting at, a, at home being like, what the hell is this? If you have this open beside you, at least even like if you still don't really understand it, you can say, right, these are the words I don't understand. Let me look these up and figure out what they mean. That it can be a little bit of a boost for you, if that makes sense. So I'll actually just stand out of this shot for a second. And if you guys want to screenshot that, just to kind of have it, if you want to take it down or whatever. I used to have this on like the inside of my hardback when I was in sixth year. It can just be a little bit of a reminder as to what to focus the majority of your energy on. So I hope that was of some help. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below or you can message us or whatever. And we will try and make sure that you are all up to date on all of this stuff. So see you guys next time. Muchas gracias. Adios.